remind you, remind you the USB that we shouldn't, and their malware enters the system, the cloud, the network, and does nothing at first, but spies, steals information, and at the end they start attacking, either by locking us out of our own system, or taking some data and spreading it out, and there are so many uh, techniques that they do, and motivation of the, what, they, what they do. But this is, in general, how they do it. So what they do, there are two techniques, phishing and phishing. So mashallah, you said you already know phishing, so I will say it also in simple terms as promised. So phishing is uh, printing out an image that looks authentic and original, such as email. You would receive an email, at work email, that looks exactly like your daily emails. However, there is something unnoticeable. So many times, they are in, the, in that email. So this is where we should really take care. How many times we should ask ourselves, our, our teams, how many times do we really check the details, each letter of the sender? Well, we see the name of the sender, and he is one of my colleagues, and this is one, one of their techniques. They know, they infiltrate bit by bit, so they take data. Okay, this is actually a colleague of mine. So the name looks official, the logo is official, the title, the head letter, everything looks official. And they use a bait, they use a subject title that will really pull you in. Vacations, allowances, bonuses, warning, all of them. They would really want you to focus on what they want you to focus on. The URL. Just go through the URL. And once you do, sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes they take you to another page or a broken page. But they got in. They infiltrated the system. So this is one of their techniques. This is a very simple uh, example of phishing technique. Or phishing technique. Vision is very similar, however, they add to it phone calls, scamming phone calls. I would guess in the last 18 months, all of us here had a scam phone call. Who would agree? I had. Calling, calling me on my personal phone, talking and uh, addressing me with my right name, and telling me some details, like I'm not ID number. So, obviously, this is my bank. This is my bank telling me that I am a member of ID, for example. Well, I am a member of ID. I do use that, but they got my name right, they got my number right. They should be. So, this is how they do it. They know some information and they use that. And uh, let me put your mind at ease. They don't know everything yet. As long as they are calling you, they still want a bit more of data to take your money or to take whatever they want. So, they don't give them that data. Be really aware. Be really strict and affirmative of what you would say and what you wouldn't say. An official wouldn't ask some details, some, some numbers, or some figures. And actually, this is now recorded in the bank's code. Before you talk to the customer service, the recording would say, an official would not ask you for one, two, three, such as password. So this is very good here. So now knowing how big of a deal it is, and how impactful it is, and understanding how they think, what did the UAE, our beloved UAE did about us. Well, alhamdulillah, there are three big initiatives, starting with UAE, cyber crime. So, cyber crimes, uh, any type of this, cyber bullying, or cyber crimes, or phishing, or attacks, or fraud, it is now official, not only now, it has been, and has become an official offense. It has, it has become a, an attack or uh, an act that the law will uh, take justice on. Once you report the act, once you report the offensive act, you can get inshallah justice and they will help you out. Second is UAE data protection. My data, your data is alhamdulillah protected by the UAE law. And who does not respect and work with that free should be reported. And if you remember, the, uh, the marketing calls used to come very sudden and immediately start blah, 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 by our services. <clears throat> now they have become a little bit more polite, requesting your permission to talk, requesting your permission to send their detail on WhatsApp. Because they have started, uh, the, the, country, the country is, or the government is cornering them because those companies usually are very legitimate companies, but still they are in some ways taken away some of our privacy rights. So now they must, and record that they must ask your permission to, to talk to you, they must ask your permission to send you on WhatsApp. So this is one of the initiatives, and this is only the start. Third is UAE Information Assurance Framework. 
Now, inshallah, the government looked at the situation and said, you know what? We must have a standardized, uh, 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 a common standard for the whole country, for the whole entities, government, private, civil government, all. So they created a framework that gives the bare minimum. So each leader, each cyber leader, go back to your organization and double check. Are you aligned with the government's framework? How much are you aligned? And if not, then you must you know what's the next action to be. And if you are, so let's let's uh, take to the start. Let's go. Let's take it to the next level. Let's improve and be the example. So that in the UAE there are also international organizations to protect data and to protect information. So there is HIPAA, there is GDPR, there is PCI, DSS, and there is CCPA. There are also international, international organizations uh, committed to the privacy of the information, the privacy of data, and how to protect it. And by the way, so many global companies are located here, right here in Dubai and UAE. So those global companies still are working with the same regulations. And we, as government, have so many partnerships with international companies. So we also apply the same regulations. At the end of the day, all of those regulations are here to help us. The, the organizers know, the organizations, sorry, they know. They have the data, they have the stats. So we, we can read the stats. We can read all of the incidents. But there are organizations who are knowing what's happening and how it is happening and giving us assistance, a safer to work with. So we should apply it and we should apply it today. So what is my role as a manager? What is my role as a leader? Because, okay, knowing all this is good, but what should I do? The good news is it isn't far away from what you do already every single day as a manager or as a leader. It is to be aware, first of all, to be aware, to understand that this is an issue that we should consider every single day. To understand and to identify it as one of the risks, one of the hazards that we understand and we acknowledge. Number two is to adopt cyber security systems. We should start seeing and seeing such as this uh, event. We should see who are the companies that are providing the best services to my needs. So we should start designing our own ecosystem that works with us, works with our vision, works with our business, works with our budget, and start taking action. Three is be up to date and the standard risk because there is always new technologies, there is always new applications, there is always new websites. With that comes a new risk. So we should be up to date. What are our systems of work right now? And did we cover all the aspects? We have one, two, three. So is one, two, three safe yet? If not, we should know that in our vision, we will add four, five, and six. How can we protect before that? And identify the rise of uh, concerns. We will always have new concerns. We always adopt new technologies in our systems. As we said before, uh, His Highness, according to His Highness, the spread of the smart technologies. We love having the smart technologies. Our life become much faster and better with the new technologies. But we should address the risk that comes with it and deal with it. So how can we design a better system? So I will also, because knowing that we have already Mashallah managers and leaders around us, I will keep it very short and simple. So identify, assess, prioritize, and monitor. We, uh, we identify the issue, we identify the uh, hazard that we are facing with the new era of internet. We assess our situation right now. How, how far are we? Where, what do we need to improve? And we should prioritize that in our schedule, in our meetings, in our daily meetings, our weekly, monthly meetings. We should have that as uh, something to be always asking about. Here you would know that you are on the right path. If in each single meeting you are talking about cyber security, okay, this is a new idea, this is a new initiative, this is a new sponsorship that we are going with. How does it affect one another? So we know we are in the right place. And finally, we want to, as any leader, you should monitor the plan that we have already set. How is it flowing? How is it going? and learn from it. So data protection. Also, we start with mapping your critical data. Each company, each organization knows their most confidential data. Some companies, some organizations are based on an innovation or an information or a technology. This is information. Every single thing around us is information. So we should map our way to know which is the most critical one that we cannot afford to lose. And knowing that, we should put plan. We identify responsibilities and obligations. Who is responsible? 
Hoe gaat ze ons van de en dat is dat 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 en dat Finally, the final limit of security. Now we all have our cooperations. We have the methods, we have the legal team, we have the marketing team, we have the media team. And most probably, in most cases, they are not all in the same location under the same company title. So knowing this, we should know how much data we should share. Does everybody need to know everyone or everything? No, we already know that. But we should rethink that in cybersecurity. So cyber culture. Cyber culture is the combination of all what we have already said. It is enhancing, it is um, adopting these systems, adopting this ideology and putting it in place, practicing that uh, in real life with our teams, with our team members, with our managers, with our directors. We should put this as a bullet point that we always talk about, such as sustainability, sustainability, sustainability workplace and environment. Every single thing is important to us and this is why. We should work on that as a very essential information to be added. So, let me show you the timeline, how it usually happens. There are three timelines, pre-crisis, before the crisis happens, during crisis, and finally, post-crisis. Uh, whenever, if I know something in risk management, whenever there is a crisis, if we haven't planned in ahead for it, whatever we do then, it's going to be less than what we want. We should plan before it happens, because we know it's going to happen. We know it's happening every single place in the world. So it might happen to us today, tomorrow. We never know. We wish it wouldn't, but it might. So if it will happen, we should understand that we should have a plan in place. We should de delegate. Your responsibility is one of you, and your responsibility is one of you. So once it happens, not everybody is looking at each other. What's now? What should we do now? Who should we call now? Because this happens, believe me, as funny it is or embarrassing it is, this happens. Once something happens, every manager calls the other. No, we should know exactly what to do and how to act on it fast. Then, during crisis, if we have a plan in place, uh, launch it, do it. Do it as fast as possible, as efficient as possible, with keeping the operation running. And finally, post-crisis, how much how fast we recover, how do we recover, and how do we keep this organization uh, in the market properly. So those are five channels to contact when, whenever, as a person, as an individual, as a citizen, and as a uh, part of a big organization to contact. So starting with E-Crime, Dubai Police, Abu Dhabi Police, Sharjah Police, and My Safe Society. They have websites, applications that we can put up whenever something happens, such as those. And of course, don't, don't forget, Cyber Security Council is always welcoming uh, consultation, questions, and even training. By the way, Cyber Security Council, they have the, uh, the e-library containing this PDF and so much more. So you are very welcome to go to take however, uh, how many data you want to take from those presentations and to share it with your own team. This is the Cyber Pulse. Uh, message is to share awareness. And with this, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. And if you have any questions, well, give him a big round of applause. Mohammed, uh, well, I think he deserves a bigger round of applause. Make some noise, Mohammed, you guys. Come on. Cyber Pulse instructor. Opportunity, we're just really out of time. Uh, they show you that there's a little bit of Arabic right there, but I'm sure that you're available for, for questions. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you so much. Amazing.